ball, he's going over the middle. He looks fast as hell. Wow, man, that's my football touchdown. In 1972, the Dolphins were perfect. The Dolphins have won Super Bowl seven, have completed the greatest season in NFL history. Later that decade, a tiny high school team in Miami was making waves of their own in the football world. The thing that was weird is Columbia, we were a Catholic boys high school. We had 200 kids in our senior class. We had 10 guys from our senior year of high school go to D1. You had to be pretty good, and Brian certainly shined. It's a nice venue, man. So it's nice to be here. Grew up in Miami, Florida. Uh, Let me rephrase that. I grew up right around here. So I played uh, football down in Miami. Uh, thank you. Before I transferred here to New Jersey. Brian Regan is the greatest comedian of all time. Why is head over heels such a big deal? Aren't we all head over heels? Here's a little tip, a little travel tip for people who like to board planes while wearing backpacks. A little travel tip. Your backpacks are hitting people in the face. I remember being in the locker room and I saw my head coach talking to a college scout and my head coach goes, Regan, come over here. And my heart started pounding. I'm like, I know this is a college scout. So I go over there, I go, yes, coach. And my head coach goes, can you go find Whittington? Well, I was fortunate that I got to play four years in the NFL with the New York Giants. I got to play with some great players, Lawrence Taylor and Phil Sims and Joe Morris. Jim Plunkett was my first sack in the NFL. It was just, you know, I think about it, did, did I really do these things? Well, thank you. Mike Whittington. Lou and I went to Notre Dame together. We're roommates. We talked about this a lot while we were there, and we were saying, Brian could play here for sure. Played a small college football in Ohio, a little school called Heidelberg. That's about right. <laughs> when I went there, this is true, we were voted number one by Sports Illustrated for having the dumbest college team nickname, the Student Princes. <laughs> yeah. Just struck fear in your heart, didn't it? I wanted to be a, an accountant. I talked to my head coach at the time. He said, you're a funny guy. You make everybody laugh on the football team. You might be interested in the communication and theater arts department. And so I switched majors, and it was in that world that I headed towards the comedy path. I first saw Brian Regan on one of those random comedy shows. You ever look at a Pop-Tarts box? They have directions on there. Can, can there be a simpler food item than Pop-Tarts? Like if the directions weren't on there, would somebody, what the? It was like front to back. Some of the hardest I've ever laughed in my life. We knew he was good. You don't think about him being like clean, because a lot of times the guys that lead with clean suck. But you can bring your 92-year-old grandmother or nine-year-old son, it doesn't matter. Comics love Brian Regan for a reason. He's one of the funniest guys. I was a wide receiver, I was all right. I could find a little hole and catch the ball. As Soon as I caught the ball, play was over as far as I was concerned. I am available to be tackled. As a comedian, it's important to have tough skin, but Brian's bones were a different story. He broke his collarbone against Coral Gables, which was one of those, you know, 4,000 student schools that we played against, and, and this was in the Orange Bowl. We played a couple games in the Orange Bowl back then. Some defensive back came out from nowhere and hit me so hard. I remember looking straight and up at the same time. And was laid out and came off the field and he went back in and he had a broken collarbone. So he was pretty tough, pretty tough guy. I wonder if he did the Regan voice when he was injured where he's like, my clavicle, I've broken my arm. <laughs> no, I, that's his pain voice too. Just put play and then we'll look at some of your footage. I know you haven't seen it before. So proof of a pretty good game. I gotta take my little eyes out. I can't see, there we go. So this is Heidelberg against Dennison. Yeah, he went over the middle. 
Oh, he always went over the middle. In 1979, Regan was leading the NCAA in receptions before an injury sidelined him. Regan uh, looks fast. I can't say. He looks fast as hell. Is that a one-handed grab? <laughs> Touchdown. Wow, man. He really, he really was putting his body out there. That was good job, Regan. Good job, Brian. I don't know, Mr. Regan, what do I call him? I was pleasantly surprised with that. I, um, it's actually, I get a little emotional. It, that was a big part of my life, playing football. So to be able to relive that just for that moment was very cool. I hurt my knee playing college football. It was bad, man. They would inject me before games. One time I asked a doctor, I said, can I ask what's in that needle? And he looked up and said, this is really none of your concern. <laughs> Didn't mean to overstep my bounds. You know, a lot of people who know me don't know, they know me as a comedian and have no idea that I played football. I only had one touchdown my whole uh, college career. <laughs> but I have dreams to this day of going back as an adult and having that final senior year, like one more year of eligibility. I, I've had hundreds of dreams over the year, waking up, I'm a grown man with a bunch of 19, 20 year olds trying out for the team. You guys are delightful, man. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. Thank you.